That's R R D D W A A. I'm a raider with an attitude. R R D D W A A. I'm a raider with an attitude. If you first a pop out, then you most likely to win. See, I'm a raider with an attitude. Living in sin, I got a sword and a grin. It's just protecting my race. Bitch ass motherfuckers, get the fuck out my face. I'm about to give them a taste. So people said to explode. And these fools ain't fucking win. That's why they call them cowboys. And what's this bucket in the stands? Don't he's making crowd noise. They could eat on this. When they take their air poison, I'm a caller like a single. Watch me do as I please. Raider Nation, California, like the smoking on trees. And I'm a toast to my G's while I'm slapping these fleas. I don't fuck with cheese and charges while I'm crossing out seas. Raider Nation over everything, I make them believe. Before the game even starts, I'm already making them leave. From the culture to the colors, homies, this is my life. I let the whole world know this Raider Nation for life. That's R-R, D-D-W-A-A. I'm a Raider with an attitude, R-R. W-A-A I'm a Raider with an attitude W-A-A I'm a Raider with an attitude W-A-A I'm a Raider with an attitude On Vegas Boulevard, we patrolling again We got the door blast, we about to do it again We in that city of sin, devil is looking to grin You know that old song, we just win, baby We let out of win, there's a Raider Ain't got time for all these haters, I do this for Illuminati All the and welcome back to the Silver and Black Radio Podcast. And today, guys, we are talking about that blowout win we had this last Thursday against the Chargers in Allegiant Stadium, baby. Talk about an offensive explosion. We go from zero to 60 in a minute. You know, hey, we know we had Gunny Raider out there. He was actually live at the game. And, guys, I got my whole Silver and Black family here. Yo, I got my boy Gunny Raider. What up? I got my boy Tony B from Spokane. What's happening? Let's go. I got my girl Val from TBH Dallas. I got my boy All In from TBH Dallas. What's up? What's up? And the co-captain of this ship and the VP of TBH Western Colorado, my boy Matty B. What's up, everybody? All right, guys. Hey, let's get into it. Hey, like I said, what an offensive explosion this last game we had against the Chargers, guys. I mean, 63 points. We have 49 at half. I think I fell out of my chair about two or three times by the end of the first quarter. Total difference against the Vikings. We've, we've made adjustments. We see growth. We see development. We see a lot of good things happening. Guys, fill me in. Give me your thoughts. Let me know what, how you felt about the game. Let's start with Tony B. Man, I'll tell you what. That is exactly what Raider Nation needed. Like, we needed that injection of energy. I've been, like, the lack of intensity was crazy. And on Sun or Thursday... I lost my damn mind. I was, I, I just felt hype. I felt that's what we needed to, to juice us for this end run. I mean, what, what, I mean, offensive, defensive, special teams, total game plan was on point. Everything just turned out perfect. I loved it. Yes, sir. I bet I couldn't agree with you more. Val, what were your thoughts? I know that you were a little bit sickened by last week's performance. What'd you think about this week? I was in shock. Like, I was just, Joe did all the yelling for me, pretty much. <laughs> Shout out to Shit Joe Joe. Um, he was pretty much hyped, but, I mean. <laughs> 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 um, but, I mean, I was just, I mean, Alan knows. I was just kind of like, where, 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 where was, like, all of this, like, all year? You know what I mean? Like, that energy. You could feel it was a different energy in the game. And people are like, oh, well, you know, you know their defense sucks. And I'm like, they have the same record. I mean, are they really any much worse or better than us? I don't know. I got you. I got you, girl. But I mean, like, a lot of haters out there, that's for sure. I I was definitely happy. I, I It was just one of those feel good, needed it, especially with all, like, all the points we scored. It was just, it was great. I went to bed peacefully. 
Right. Now sleeping like a baby. I got you all yeah. in. What were your thoughts, baby? Man, yeah. same like Tony and Rob both said, just excitement. The nation needed it. We definitely needed it. Uh, especially heading into KC. Big week this week. Rivalry week. You know, I don't, I don't give a damn. 63 points against whatever team. I mean, you're in the NFL. It's impressive. It's only been done twice since what, fifty seven? They said forty. Us and the uh, uh, the Patriot or the, excuse me, the Dolphins a couple weeks ago. So it, yeah, it's impressive to put up points like that. Definitely, no. we we needed it. No, absolutely. I'm coming from the Raiders of all teams. Right. Oh man, it's going from zero. But Matty B, your thoughts, my brother. Oh man, I went into this game nervous, man. I was like, ah. Oh. We got to win this game, you know, and then I, man, this game brought me back to when we beat Denver, you know, and we, we came out and we just, we mauled them, man. And that's the feeling I had when we came out and we started doing what we were doing. And then, man, seeing 63 at the end of the day, see, I even won my 63 jersey today just for that, you know. There we go. Um, (laughs) Upshot, man. Let him know. Let him know. (laughs) But. Yeah, no, man, that was impressive, man. Um, and what did we say all year? If all three phases can get out, bam, look what we can do. And we did it, you know? It's awesome. Let's keep going. We got Kansas City next. Yes, sir. All right. And last but not least, the man that brought the magic to the stadium, that was in the stadium, <laughs> running late like always, but felt the electricity firsthand, my boy, Gunny Raider. Yeah, man, it was uh, running late is an understatement. You know what I mean? I had some <laughs> things going on early in the day, some big events that I had to take care of, but I had the tickets, so I wasn't going to miss it. We were on the phone. And it was, we're like, first quarter is about to start, and I'm like 20 minutes away still. So I, I drive in there. Once I found parking and everything, I walk in the stadium. Didn't look at anything at all. I wasn't even looking at the screen, nothing. Just walked in, going to get some, got myself a drink real quick, and then it goes upstairs by the torch. I look up and I see 28 nothing. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, is that fucking right? I'm like looking at other scoreboards and shit like that. I was like, hey, no way. 28 nothing. I was shocked, dude. I was shocked. Like completely, totally shocked. But right after that, I was like, well, shit. If it's 28 nothing, I might, I might have myself a nice night tonight. We're going to be chilling, right? <laughs> Hey, that's no, absolutely. I didn't miss anything. I thought you, I missed you, something. I didn't miss nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you I got a question. Points. Go ahead, girl. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, this is for everybody, I guess. But what I mean, what do you think changed um, within the locker room and the coaches for this game for that game to be so successful? Like, what do you get? What do you think changed? Oh, what do you man. think happened? So, you know what? Hey, hey, I'll start with this one, fellas. I'm going to start with this one. So, check this out. Yo, here's my opinion on this one, all right? This team loves AP. Bro, if we're going to grade AP, and this is where I think we have to look at wins and losses and the way that your team reacts to you when you're a coach. AP is a dog, bro, and he leads dogs, okay? If you look at it, guys, this team wants to fight for AP. They want him to remain the coach, and they want him to be the guy. Okay, So what I think happened was they saw, hey, you know what? Minnesota was a total turd nugget, man. I mean, like, we shit the bed. So they said, hey, we ain't got nothing to lose. And when you ain't got nothing to lose, you know, you get pinned up against that wall, you're going to fight or you're going to run? you know, fight or flight kind of sentence. And what we did is we made a stand. And we said, you know what? We want AP to be our guy. We saw Bo Hardinger, man, say, you know what? I ain't got nothing to lose. We're going to attack. And AOC finally came into that phase, in my opinion, where we talked about it last week. He was scared to make a mistake, guys. He was scared to see something and be like, oh, no, I'm going to make a mistake. In this game, this dude was prepared, homie. 
I don't care what you say. If you look at that pocket, besides the O-line playing out of their mind and it being clean, that or Munford, I love you, bro. You don't allow a freaking sack playing left tackle for the first time in your life. Going from right to left ain't no joke. Hmm. First of all, offensive line played clean. AOC's out there throwing spikes. So you can tell that from the top down, okay, something happened. Where they said, we ain't got nothing to lose, so we're going to go out there, we're going to fight. And the attitude changed. And I mean, like, just look at the Chargers. Bro, they're in the same situation. The record's kind of the same. But they just went out there and they laid over. I mean, bro, I, like I said, I, after the first quarter when I, I saw 21 points, I said, ooh. My wife will tell you. She heard me screaming straight up across town. I mean, I had to run outside the building. I was yelling so much <laughs> at the bar. Bro, they, they were like, it, it was just that type of energy. So that's what I feel like. So, hey, shoot, that's my thoughts. Hey, yo, all in, what's you? What you got? Man, I think uh, a lot of what you said, they, they definitely want AP to stick around. And they, they going to fight for him. Uh, I think the short week helped. Uh, you know, they didn't have time to, to dwell on that Minnesota game. Uh, they, could, they could get after it. Uh, Bo being in the box versus on the field, I think, I, I think is a big deal. Play callers could see the whole field from the top. Yep. Uh, man, and they did what they did, you know, a little bit of what I talked about. Get AOC in a rhythm early, man. Build that dude's confidence. Get him some short passes. Get him going. And and they did that, and it, I mean it had led to success. No, that, that, you ain't lying. Shoot, hey, let's go, hey Gunny, you got you guys pass it around, man. I, I, pass it around, pass it around. <clears throat> well, I, I can't. I, who knows what really happened behind there, right? I could only think about what what would happen if if I was if if you're in charge of any kind of. If you're in any kind of leadership position out there, right? If your if your people, your guys, your gals, anybody, if they actually respect you, and you walk in after they've had a shitty performance, because let's be honest, I mean, three point, I mean, zero points. You got to come. Anybody can come up with fucking points, even in the worst offense and the worst play calling. People, still, even in the Josh McDaniels era, we still came up with some points. You know what I'm saying? So he had to have walked into that locker room and expressed his um his uh disappointment to that team and you know it's, it's kind of like the old it's kind of like the old saying you know you don't get pissed but you're, when your parents are disappointed that's when you know you really fucked up right so I, I feel like that's probably what happened he walked in there and just let them know like hey that was fucking terrible like what are, what are we doing you guys want to be pros or should we go find some more people some different type of people like what are we doing so you know anytime i'm sure we've all been in those positions before where we've had to kind of break the news like hey you guys suck today but you know, he's just doing it on a different level and, you know, in a game, really. So um, I think that's I, I, that's my guess of what happened. Something, something along the same lines as what Will was talking about. Yeah. For me, for me personally, um, I think the aggression and the play calling out the gate, just smacking them early and getting in their face, it broke them, like, quick. And I don't think there was no coming back. Like, they just, they didn't, the, the Chargers just didn't have like, not only did we have all facets of the game covered, they had absolutely no answer for nothing um, mm -hmm. in any of the facets of the game. So, like, by jumping early, I think it stunned them so much that they were always behind the eight ball, and we were just knocking them in corner pocket. So, I mean, I like the aggression out the gate and just being able to to sustain that throughout and not just, like, come crashing down. because. I mean, we're up seven nothing. I'm waiting. We're up fourteen nothing. I'm just waiting. I'm like, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, twenty. Oh, hold on a second. I can start relaxing a little bit. Even if they score one, we're still up three. Like but now we're up four score. I'm just going, and I just started having fun watching, and they were having fun playing, and that's a hundred percent where it was. They were just Hell having yeah. a great time out there. Hell yeah, yeah. And no, I think we all came out like expecting it to be a really close game and I think the Chargers I think they were in it but I also think that they I think Staley lost that locker room before he went in that game um 
And I think when we came out and they seen us come out and we played as hard as we did and we, we punched them in the mouth, you know, the first quarter was 21, nothing, you know, they, they were like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, like, and Staley had no answer, dude. Everybody quit playing for him after that. You know, like they were done. Big time. Um, Big time. You know, um, man, it's, it's awesome. Like it's great feeling, you know? Um, now people are going to say it's the chargers, you know, it's the chargers, but they got a good defense, man. You know, like it's like I said, every team we play, they out they're NFL teams. Every team's NFL team. But you know, even being a division, it's awesome. You know, uh, uh, I, so. I, hate, I hate, hearing, hate hearing that now about the Chargers. Let, when we from when the preseason always starts, they're supposed to win the Super Bowl every fucking year, right? Every year, every they're the year Cowboys. Char- they're the Cowboys of the listen, AFC. They're, 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 five, they're five or six and eight or whatever. And seven now oh, they suck they suck right but every year they suck they just get the they just get a good shot right up front right everybody gives them a chance it's terrible yep. can't yep. stand these motherfuckers no, no, i can't so, either man well, and it's awesome it feels paper, good man. you know they and you know, the, the the best feeling about the whole thing in my opinion was you know like i witnessed the denver game that shit was fucking awesome when we put up you know those 50 points 50 i think it was 59 was it 59 points we put up on them yeah. Um, but man, when we watched that game, that shit was awesome, man. Cause we did the same thing. We came out and they were just weren't expecting it. And we just blew them out of the water, you know? Um, mm-hmm. but watching the Chargers, you know, and then we put up 63 on them was like, fuck yeah. You know, this is now two rivals that we have that we've put up that many points on. No, we're not, you're right. So, Guys, another thing, and you know, things that changed. Like, you know, let's look at certain players that stepped up. All right. Val said, what changed? Bro, Malcolm Coombs. Mm-hmm. Talk about a dude that has changed the perspective of the Raiders defense. Guys, we got another bookend. We got another pass. Yeah, that's right. We got another guy that can make the difference. You know, then we put a. Hey, we put Tyree inside, what a change. Man, the guy is collapsing the pocket. He's making a difference. I saw the difference in scheme from Patrick Graham, you know. I like that. Jack Jones, bro, that pick, oh. that pick, I said, ooh, I said, that's prime time, baby. I said, hey. <laughs> that's the best pick of the season, man. The best hey. interception of the season. Hey, Shit, what, that might hey. be the best for the last several years. Yeah, I mean that's the Odell Beckham of the defense. You know, like that's that that one handed catch. You know that Odell yeah. that Odell showed. You know that's that's the defense. You know, like they're gonna show that for years, like you said, dude. Oh, All I said was this. I, and that's why I'm saying he caught it from behind, guys. He ran past. Yeah, yeah. It was he it. ran past so, it because I mean, like, he was, was so quick on game. the play. <laughs> but I mean, like I was like immediately I saw that play, and I was like, "Hey, baby, I'm gonna see you on ESPN's top ten tonight." Mm-hmm. What's crazy for too life. is top ten for life. <laughs> he was mic'd up that game. If you go on he was, YouTube, he was, I saw that today. Oh, if you go on man. YouTube, he was mic'd up that game, and he oh, he, you can listen to him. They're just having, like I was saying, they're just having fun. They're laughing. They're having a good time. They're joking. And no, then when, when the you best interception points, I've seen in a while. When you get up 21 points, you're having a good time. I mean, 49 at half? Shoot, you mm-hmm. almost drinking hot margaritas and going on vacation at half. I'd be like, but again, that's the way teams that have that letdown. But then, hey, another guy that stepped up, Divine Diablo, bro. I mean, the dude is becoming a sideline to sideline linebacker. Dude had 12 tackles. 12 yeah, tackles. Yeah, he's a dog. Another dude that we, everybody was like, hey, man, don't know about this guy, you know, you know, undersized Mike linebacker, blah, blah, blah. But, man, when you're talking to a dude that's running sideline to sideline, making hits, making plays, hello, Mr. Devon man. Diablo is in the building. Spillane, man, that guy was ooh, oh, another Spillane. good performance by that man. Dude, that dude is just every week, every but, week, every that dude's he's making there. a play. Yeah, and he's consistent. But that's why I was saying, I mean, like, that guy made a change. And, and on special teams, bro, Turner coming down, I'd be, like, ripping the ball out of the du- the, the returner's hands. Oh, I was like, okay. Once I saw that one, I said, bro, special teams, offense, defense, it, it's whatever you want to do today. It was just a score of Palooza. 
and the Raiders yep. were all over it on every single play, baby. So, hey, fellas, hey, g- give me some names that you guys saw, like Val said, that changed the game for you guys, that you guys were like, yo, I did not expect this dude to make these plays and make it happen. I got this one. You just, you, just said, you just said that you didn't expect to have I, I second last – I'm first – First to admit, last week I said, AOC, give us a reason to not draft a quarterback. Yeah. And he gave us an answer. Like, he came back and showed up. Like, AOC playing with confidence looked phenomenal. Uh, It was just exactly what the offense needed. No, I got you. Yo, all in. Man, for me, was and I – Said we needed it. We needed it to happen. At Turner, get Turner downfield. Let's open it up. They oh, sure did. For me, it was Turner, man. It, it, or Trey Tucker, you mean? Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Yes, you bet. Trey Tucker can't throw the ball. If you can't throw the ball, the ball deep, man. It's. I mean, you become easy to stop. I know. I got you. Ain't got that threat. Yo, Batty B. Oh um, man. Uh. They may not have put up a bunch of yards, but the running backs, man, Zamir White and Brandon, uh, or uh, yeah, Brandon Bolden, you know, those guys, they ran oh. hard. You know, they may not have, like I said, they may not have got over a hundred yards. You know, together they did, but you know themselves, they didn't. You know, Jacobs was hurt. You know, but they came in, they stepped up, and they played with heart too. You know, I'd have to give it to the running backs too. No, absolutely, they made their time not. worthwhile. That's for sure. Exactly. Exactly. You know. Yeah, yep, no. Exactly. We, we were all second guessing after that last game where Zamir played, and we was like, I was, that was my biggest question going into the game was the running backs because I was like, man. Yeah, without gonna, Josh. Are we, are we even going to try to play this game? Like, we didn't have Jacobs. We ain't got Miller. We ain't got, <laughs> you know, we got guys out everywhere, man. Was 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 Devontae going to play? Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's question. You know? And Zamir has been, I mean, a question mark since we drafted, since we drafted him. Really. him, yeah. He's yeah. still a question mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm definitely not saying he's not. But, but he's I mean, still... hey, but you got, you got. I mean, he, he hasn't well. been in. The, he hasn't played a lot. You know, it, it's been a lot of Josh Jacobs. You know, for the last year. Yeah. You know, so. No, absolutely, buddy. But, but like I said, hey, oh, go shine ahead, when you're in there. Shine when you're in there. Yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that that's the thing is he had. Yeah, he hasn't played a lot, but when he has gotten his opportunity, he ain't done shit with it. Yeah, this. he ain't done shit. Yeah, exactly. 100. Agreed. Uh, Gunny. Um, well, I mean, we pretty, we kind of threw out just about damn near everybody. So I'll give my, uh, I'll give my, my, my coach's game ball type thing to the, to the O line, man. Yes, sir. The That's O-line, what I was waiting for. O-line, the O line <laughs> kept fucking, kept AOC upright, man. And what do we say? He needs everything to be perfect for him to be a great quarterback. And everything was perfect. And you everything. saw what he could do when you got everything around him that looks great. So you only have one sack. Go on, line, go on AOC, man. He took advantage of that of that clean pocket. Well, hey, and to your point of the O line, they threw the kitchen sink at Mac this time. They Unlike, sure did. You know when Josh and I we threw the sink at him and <laughs> didn't do shit in the first game. Yeah, they, I mean they had a game plan for Khalil Mack, and that was a big difference. Got him yeah. down. Oh man, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, McDaniels had some ghost players out there. That's what he meant. He had a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, couple. seeing Mac all pissy on the sideline, pouting that's on the bench, great. that that made my day. Beautiful. No, absolutely. And you guys said something, man. I mean, like, I like that Tony hit it right on the head. You know what, bro? I wrote this down on AOC because I was like, you know what? Again, we're we're being critical of this guy. We know that hey, he has a short time that he has stuff going on, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So. Bro, I said, ball distribution was amazing. I think we had eight guys with touchdowns, mm-hmm. right? Yep. I said, hey, his decisiveness was out of this world. I mean, like, literally, he was throwing strikes everywhere. I didn't see one bad pass. But then a hey, gunny capped it off when he said, yo, the O-line, they was mugging people up, bro. I mean, it looked nasty. I, I could have thrown the pass out there. I completed one <laughs> or two out there. I mean, like, I could have got out there. I would have been like, hey, 
set. Raiders on one. Go. <laughs> Get me like maybe a chuddy or two. Because, dude, the dude could set up camp back there. I mean, he was like, hey, let me barbecue. I mean, bro, look at every single play. And, and, yep. I, and I love that we all have thought about this and we all came up to get like, it, it's just a different thing, man, because the offensive line was absolutely incredible. The defense did everything they had to do. And it, and it was just a combination, man. But, you know, it, it was, you know, what? go ahead, girl, go ahead. My bad. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You know what ahead. made me happy? What made me happy is um, seeing everybody put um let me see put in the work you know what i mean like everybody contributed to it i mean it it was it was nice to see that and i mean jenkins oh i enjoyed (laughs) watching him get that touchdown i mean and he was super i mean i don't know if you um was watching, but I know they had. Uh, well, there's a video I saw. I was watching oh, about miles an hour. <laughs> Is that how fast he was going? They, they said yeah, they talked him at that, bro. Uh, that's what miles they said on. Hour. That's what they said on TV. But they they clocked him in like what the gun actually said was 14. But I don't think it was even 14, bro. My son was watching that when he did it, and he's like. Is that guy gonna get tackled? He's so fat. Look at him. <laughs> He's not gonna make it very far. <laughs> like, was, and he takes it all the way back. And I was like, "That's the rarest touchdown you're ever gonna see, son." <laughs> yeah, he was getting Watch tackled. He had crowd a, even got a little quiet while he was. He had security with. there with all. Yeah, he had everybody. Oh he man, sure he had did. the whole team. He had the whole team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One, but one it thing made that me I happy. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. No, In no, our no. group chat, that, I wrote. Go ahead. Uh, I wrote something about the first two passes that he threw didn't have no zip on the ball. Like, yeah, it, it yeah. just looked like, and then I'm sitting there going, Sup, like, I think he thought, oh, crap, here we go again. And after that second pass, I shut up. I didn't have nothing else to say. <laughs> like, I mean, it was just like a little out. It just didn't have that, that spit, that, 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 that zip. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, you know what? I'm done with this. Here we go. Let's just start slanging it. Yo, you ain't lying. Hey, speak. hey hold up. Well, the Go one ahead, thing ahead. I got to tell you guys, talk about shit that makes you happy. Um, at, when I got there in the first quarter, I overheard these two Chargers fans talking about, let's just get the fuck out of here. I mean, like, Chargers, <laughs> fan, like, Chargers fan, like, two and three out of, like, 15 or however many fans they have. You know what I'm saying? They were like, oh, let's get the fuck out of here. I was like, ha, ha, you bitch ass. Get out of here. <laughs> how many fans do you think we're out so how many Charger fans were there? I'd only seen about like it, eight it or wasn't nine. many, bro. And I'll tell you what, I don't know how many left at the at the end of the first quarter, to be honest with you, but um <laughs> those seats were there were not there was not a lot of charge of powder blue, let's say, in the in the stands. Hey, so <laughs> how many of those fans were robots? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the next question. <laughs> right. I was wondering for that lady that they got on that meme just to be like screaming. Yeah. I wanted to. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh. <laughs> they just got I multiple was... of her everywhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was waiting for right. her to send me a selfie. <laughs> I got the one Chargers fan that's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. we found her. Yeah, they, we found they duplicated her. that one Chargers fan. <laughs> <laughs> that was but you know what? Thousand Chargers <laughs> face <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Yo, but the one thing that Val said, guys, about this game is absolutely true, man. This was a team win, a complete team win. Special teams played outstanding, okay? Offense, out of their mind. Defensively, shoot, baby, we've been playing out of our skull for a couple of weeks now. Yep. So, hey. Really, since P. they Graham. took the job. Yeah, and P. Graham got them playing like no other. And like we said, hey, the, the change upstairs for Bo was a big thing, man. I mean, like we saw the offensive go. Now, guys, let's move on to segment two. Guys, in segment two, I got a question for you guys now. All right. And Val and I were talking and we wanted to know, hey, fellas, was this game enough for, to convince you 
to give you guys to give AP the job if you guys were the owner. All right. So let me know. Hey, Maddie B, let's start with you, brother. Um, I'm not going to say it's a hundred percent given to him right now, but I will say that it is a big, uh, it's a big step forward for him. Um, I want to say I that the team has him and I want to say Mark Davis is going to give him the job. Like, it's just my opinion, but, uh, but I think if I was looking at it and he was my intern, I show me that you can do this against the chiefs. You know, show me you can do this against, a, you know, somebody that pretty much embarrassed us last time we played them. You know what I mean? Like, come back in there and show me the Chiefs. You know, like, if I can see that you can beat the Chiefs, like, that's – or at least win, you know, the next two after that. If you leave, Even if you lose to the Chiefs, if you can win the next two after that, you know, like, the team plays for him. But wins matter in this game, man. It's not about – it's not about, hey, who's the cool guy and who's this and who's that. Wins and losses matter, man. It's not a – it's not a popularity contest. No, I so, got you. I so mean, still not enough. You still, you still need to see a little enough. bit more. I mean, yeah, I, hey, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, not enough. I'm um, just a little bit. You know, show me, show me a couple more wins. You know, show me that your team can push forward with this and not go drop a zero on fucking Kansas City. You know, like coming out of Miami and Kansas City, and then we go and we drop a, a big old fat egg on the fucking my or Minnesota Vikings. You know. Yeah, no, I got you. I want to see consistency. You. Got you, brother. Gunny? Shit, man. If you asked me last week, I might say no. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, I was like, man, you don't, you don't, you're not a professional football team. You can't score. I, I said, you know what's funny? I said, not one stinking point. You know how much shit I got for fucking saying one stinking point? It's like, you can't score one point in NFL football. You don't know shit. I was like, it's a joke, man. Of course you can't score one point in NFL football. <laughs> And somebody, I saw, I was on Instagram, somebody else saying the same thing. Like, they said the exact same thing. I was like, bro, me and you caught the same fire. Anyways, um, yes, I, I think so. As long as he doesn't, as long as there's nothing crazy that happens in the next two weeks, right? If they go to, if they go to Kansas City and they compete and, you know, they, they fall short, or if they win, that's, I'm still same level there, right? Same thing, you know, they, as long as they finish out the season good, they compete. They're on. They're in the games. They're not getting blown out. They're scoring points. You know what I'm saying? Getting getting a field goal or two. You know that'll be okay. But um, yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think I think he's just got to find the right people. Get lean on those people. But you know, what, when I was worried about him being a raw possible raw raw guy, I don't think that anymore. I think that you know his job is to motivate his troops, and he was able to do that after that Minnesota Vikings debacle. debacle. A week ago, you know what I mean, and you know what we've blown out two teams since he took over as head coach, right? So we had the thirty to six win against um, the Giants, and now we we put up a record. So that's that's got to say something, right? I mean, it's there, the potential's there. We have we're missing some pieces, but you know this isn't a rebuild, man. This is not a rebuild, and we bring in a new head coach. We're gonna we might be seeing a damn rebuild, and I don't want yeah. that at all. Okay. No, no, nobody wants to see another rebuild right now, man. Hey, Tony B. Tired of Yes, sir. For, hey, Tony B. For me, um, I I always thought, show me a five on your record after you took over the team to to get your to get a, a, a good shot at it, getting your spot back. These last three games are gonna be crucial because if if they go three and zero. Oh, he he stays, or if we go zero and three, he goes. Or like, it, it it's really dependent on how they perform on these last these last games. Like, for me to really have a, like, I just want an open mind when we go into the situation. I want to be able to go in to the off season and and have an open mind, either looking at options or or the, whatever direction they want to go. Just not feeling that they're going to be forced into making a decision that they might not have wanted, make the wrong decision, and then be stuck with, like he said, a rebuild. I want to reload, not a rebuild. Okay, so you're kind of still on the same boat. You want to see a little bit more. You're yeah, kind of I mean, leaning towards them. But it's a 50, for me, it's a 50-50 shot, I guess you can say, because I really would like to see these last games before, like, 
there's a lot still to go on these last ones before we can really have a real good say on which way to go. Okay. All in? Yeah, I don't – I mean, to me, to me, like I said last week, I still think – I think it's a two-man race. I think it's Harbaugh or AP. And, uh, you know, obviously I think AP holds the advantage because he's got the guys in the locker room. Uh, but if he goes out and shits the bed the next three – I I don't think there's a shot he keeps it, but uh, you know we we know we can score on KC, uh, but you got to stay competitive. You can't let your foot off the gas like we did the first time. Well, hell, I mean I know we put up sixty three points on Thursday, but offensively we let off the gas in the second half. That hey, that, that could have been way uglier. They the offense fell a little went got a little stale in the second half. We need to see a little more consistency offensively for 60 minutes and not 30. But uh yeah, I think it I think it's a two-man race, but I think it depends on on these last three. Okay. Val, what's your thoughts? What would you like to see done with AP? I don't know. I don't think I think he needs to stick around or I would like to see him stick around only because he needs time. Um, I think last time I mentioned he kind of was just like thrown into the mix here. Um, but in, I mean, in the off season, I think if he keeps, if they keep AP around in the off season, he's going to have a chance to, um, really get some stuff in and in a different perspective, not from um, any other, but I don't know. My mind's jumbled you're, you're right still, now. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're still up in the air too. So basically it's like, more hey, so, you know, but you can't really judge him just on these past couple of games. Okay. I got you. So I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm with Val guys on this. Okay. And I'm going to tell you guys like this. I think it's so difficult because we evaluate a lot on wins and losses, okay? But when I think we evaluate on wins and losses, we also got to be realistic when you have a coach that has taken over basically, okay, we're going to call it a program because he calls it a program. You know, coach, coach does, and he goes, it's like college football. He goes like, hey, it's a program. And with his program, okay, when you take over a program halfway through, Guys, you're not able to instill your stuff. Culturally, you're not able to say, hey, this is what I want you to be. He took over a broke down car. And right now, you know, he's putting tires on the jalopy. He's fixing flats. You know, hey, he's plugging up stuff. And I would, what I want to see is this, all right? If we're going to judge Coach Pierce, okay, I think what we need to do is these last three games, yes. Do we have to win and be competitive? Absolutely. I think we have to win at least two games, okay? You know, I think if we win two games and we're competitive, okay, against the Chiefs, I'd be, like, competitive to say, like, yo, we were in this game, and you see that the guys are getting better, okay? Because right now, Malcolm Koontz, improving, okay? Tyree, improving. Defense, improving. Every single facet of our team is improving mm -hmm. so that's what we can evaluate this guy is say hey where did he get this team at because we're from where we started to where we're at right now in this part of the season okay and we're talking about what well, how many games he took over five four or five games yeah since the giants game i think this is the game four. five this is the fifth, fifth game i think this is yeah. our game week five. six Okay, this will be game six, right? Okay. No, this will be game seven because he'll coach nine games. There's three left. Oh, that's right. Okay. So yeah, you're right. So just look at the difference in our team in this last seven games from where we started. Look at the improvement that we've made. Look at the guys that we signed. All right. This is why I like Champ Kelly. Okay. This is where we got to evaluate Champ Kelly too is to say, hey, what guys? He didn't have guys that you could say, hey, we can trade. These guys got the team after the trademark. So, again, hey, they got them after the trade. They made these pickups, okay? Jack Jones was because AP knew him. 
AP coached him in high school. He said, I vouch for that. He fell, through all Ra- he fell through Ravers. So, guess what? Right now, in my opinion, these guys right here, they're doing a hell of a job with what they got. And they're showing yep. every single week that they're improving and they're getting better. I mean, by AP getting rid of Marcus, getting rid of Teamer, putting Bo up in the box, doing all these things. Guys, AP's making a lot of moves. I still want to see a little bit more. But, man, every single week, he just keeps getting better and better. And I mean, like, he keeps looking like that one piece that's going to be the, the game changer for us. So I, I really do like that. All right, guys, now let's move on to the next question on this one. Did AOC do enough to convince you on the quarterback position? And let's start with Tony B, because I know that last week Tony said, hey, baby, (laughs) AOC, you got to show me something so we don't draft somebody to take your job. He showed me a little. He showed me a little. little. He needs to show me more because we can't base earning a spot off of one good game against, you know, I mean, yes, against the Chargers, but, like, show me show me a little bit more, some consistency, like we were talking about. Like, you have three, the four games were, were, the, were was the test, and he's passed the first chapter, the first, you know, of the book that he's writing in, as the start of this year um, or this part of the year. Um, but he's got three more games to to earn it. Like, so when we do our season wrap up show after we make the playoffs and we have a deep run, um, optimistic, um, we can really go back and we can see how the body of work looks on the. Okay. Hey. All in. Thoughts on AOC. AP played well, man. You know, uh, but I don't. I still don't think he's going to be the guy. I think we need to find a quarterback that's mobile. Um, you know, we played a terrible defense this week. Uh, he carved them up. The Chiefs will be. The Chiefs are a better test. Let's see what they look like. But I think the future. I think we need a, a mobile a mobile quarterback. These pocket guys just ain't getting it done. No, absolutely, man. I, 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 I can see what you're saying. That's the way the game is changing. A lot of people are moving over to that, to that more dynamic quarterback. All right. Hey, Gunny, thoughts on AOC? Did he do enough or are you still wanting to see more? Well, I think AOC just showed me exactly what I thought he was going to show me when he had a clean pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that, yeah. He he showed he showed me he's he's a good player when everything's clean. Um, with that said, I don't know if you don't draft a quarterback based on that that because I remember just a few years ago, what was it? Ryan Fitzpatrick used to come out and throw like ten fucking interceptions the first three weeks of the year, and then not throw another excuse me a touchdown, and then not throw another touchdown the rest of the the rest of the year. That type of thing. People get hot sometimes, man. I'm not I'm not sold just yet. But even if I was sold, I'll still say the same thing. I want three quarterbacks in that room come next season, the start of next season. I want some competition in that joint because I don't want to. I do not want to see some dude that should not be. I don't even remember his name anymore. Our third string quarterback this year. You know what I mean? Jimmy G is probably <laughs> gonna be out the door. If he isn't, then he probably won't be a second stringer. That's for sure because he's not. Well, he's gone. He's no just cutting. not. You know what I'm saying? The worst quarterback room in the NFL, man, right there, you're looking at it. You know what I'm saying? So I need some real competition back there. Whether that comes from free agency or the draft, I, I don't care where it comes from, or even a trade, I, I need some competition for ALC. And if he comes out on top, shit, we were all right. He's the new guy. <laughs> no, 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 I got you. I got you. I like that. So I'll, we're going to talk about that a little bit later because, I, hey, I, I just – I really like that. I think Tony and well, – we all talked about it last week, but, and we all brought that up. But we want to have a guy, you know, that you draft, an older guy that you bring in and bring in a lot of competition to that quarterback, you know, to improve it. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Hey, Matty B, thoughts on AOC? Man, um – I don't think we're going to just like dump Aiden 
You know, I don't think we're going to just be like, yeah, you're not the quarterback. You know, we're going to go after somebody else. He's going to be on the, he's going to be on the roster next year. Um, he's going to have a chance to fight for that spot. Um, now I don't think he's got the spot and I think it's kind of dumb if we don't draft a quarterback this year. Um, so, but I do want to say like, so I heard today I was driving home from work and I was listening to Sirius XM and they were talking about how, uh, how all these coaches are getting all this like guaranteed money. Right. You know, and they're not coaching anymore, you know, and they're all getting all this money. But if you look at like quarterbacks, people are not, you know, it's like, look at everybody's quarterback room. How many, how many quarterback rooms do you know of that are solid from one to three? How many people load up on their quarterbacks like that? How come we can't put money into a position like that? and build a solid like quarterback because if your first one goes down your second one goes down you got a good solid third string quarterback people do it with running backs all the time like they were saying people do it with running backs all the time why can't you put that money into a quarterback so there i mean like i'm what i'm getting to is uh i guess what i'm getting to so i'm just kind of rambling on um is i think we need more quarterbacks to fight yeah, for you're, um you're in the same having part more is them. never yeah we need we need more quarterbacks, you know, to fight. You know, we have like he said, he's got we got the worst quarterback room in, in the league. So so you're so, you're in the same boat as AOC still hasn't done enough for you, so you want to see more competition in that room. Not that he hasn't done enough. I like I said, it just I want to see competition with him. Like I want to see somebody else go in there. I don't see any competition behind him right now. We don't have any of that there. Huh. Yeah. I think I, I get what you're one saying. Second, real quick. On the competition side of it, I want to see that too. But the problem with paying too many quarterbacks, and whereas the running backs is the running backs filter in more, and they play even in the smaller roles more than a backup quarterback that's going to have a headset on. So a lot of times they don't want to pay the headset holder. I want the competition, but if we're paying too much in the quarterback room, we're not paying it somewhere else. I guess what I'm trying to get to on that is like a lot of quarterbacks run nowadays, right? So they tend to get hurt a little oh, yeah. more. So that's where I was kind of coming with that. You know, like if you're going to put, if we're going after a quarterback this year that has mobility and he gets hurt, we need somebody behind him to step up, you know, and maybe, maybe that's AOC, you know, but if AOC goes down, we need somebody else that can step in too that has the, you know, we need, we just got to, like, that's where I was getting at with that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just thought it was look, a good. Look at, that. look at that too, though. I mean, AOC is not getting paid next year, mm-hmm. no matter what. And if we're going to end up drafting a quarterback, he's not getting paid no matter what. So all we got to really do is bring in a, a veteran QB that could, you know, Damn, there sprinkle you go. a little bit of knowledge dust all over the room, and then we, we're good. You know and what I mean? you can do it that way. You yeah. could do it that way. But how many – I don't know. Yeah, you could do it that way. But a lot of no, teams don't I, hit on quarterbacks in the draft, you know? That's true. That's true. I agree with that. So I, 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 I'm with you guys, I think. When we look at AOC and his body of work right now, he still hasn't proven enough to me to say, hey, man, we don't need another quarterback for the future. Guys, I I like what you guys are talking about that, hey, one, we draft one, okay, and two, we bring in a veteran, okay? When we bring in a veteran, like it's like you guys say, hey, we're not paying very much money for a fourth rounder. Now we bring in a first round draft pick, Okay, because let's be real. If we're bringing in a QB, we got to hit uh, in the first round. That, that's the movement has to be. I mean, like, we're not going to get a quarterback in the second round, guys. It's just not going to happen. So for us, I think we make that move in the first round. We draft it with our first pick. And we say, hey, guys, like, what can we do after these picks? in order to fill in other holes. Now, I I really like that. Now, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys think the biggest change for our offense and seeing the efficiency in AOC was the fact that we moved Bo upstairs? Or was it strictly that they game planned it that way? Or do you really think that the offense, that made a big change in our offense? And, hey, I'm going to start with Matt on this one. Matt, Matt, can you hear me? Me? Yeah, yeah. me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Val. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I'm tearing shit on my end. <laughs> um, sorry, repeat the question again. I'm sorry, man. I got. It. Yeah. So, do you think the biggest change for AOC was one the game planning, or do you think the big change was that Bo was actually sitting upstairs making the the game changes and and seeing the efficiency in our offense, so he could make those changes for Abel. So I don't know if moving him upstairs was the uh, is what made the game. I think I think he came in with the same kind of like, pretty much kind of the same kind of game plan he had the week before. You know, he it's not like I think he did uh, utilize his weapons a little bit more than he did last week. But I think in all actuality, it was pretty much the same game plan as last week. I mean, minus you know we had a bunch of big plays, so it was really hard to like overlook a lot of the game playing, you know, like we scored a lot of touchdowns and everybody, it was just seemed like touchdown after touchdown, we were scoring touchdowns. But I mean, honestly, to tell you the truth, if you're watching the game, it's not like the chargers on offense weren't any, you know, they were keeping up with us. If you look at the stats, you know, so, I mean, if it hadn't been for the turnovers and all that stuff, would it have been, would he have called a good game? You know, um, I think he called. I think he pretty much stayed in the same boat that he was last week. Um, I think he did utilize uh, Tucker a little bit more, but I mean, I think he still had kind of the same game plan. I don't think there was really much of a change. I got gotcha. you. All right, Gunny. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, I can only speak for myself and sitting, sitting at the lower level and sitting at the second level the lower level isn't as good to watch a football game at, I would say, if you want to see the game, you want to see everything that's happening. You're just getting close to the players, you know, when they're, when they're close to you or when they're near you, you're basically looking at one side of the field. If you're sitting on the corners or even if you're, unless you're sitting like 50 yard line, it's still kind of hard to see what's going on all parts of the, the field sitting on the second level now, which I started doing recently. You can see the game like perfect, man. You can see everything that's happening. You can see every block. You can see every run, every hole. Like it's, it's. I I actually like it much better than sitting in that lower bowl, to be honest with you. So if you're there to watch the game <laughs> and really watch the game, that second deck is 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 money. Now whether that helped him or it didn't, I don't know. I mean, Andy Reid sits on the sits on the sideline. He calls the whole game just fine. You know what I'm saying? So possibly that's Andy Reid though. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, he, got, he got a different. Kelsey. Yeah, he got some other stuff yeah. going on, right? That dude got to stand on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> he can't be sitting down. He get heavier. Sit down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, man. I think maybe it's possible, but if it, if it's a vantage point made him better, then I'm all for it, dude. Hit it. All in. Yeah, man. I. <clears throat> I think the move to the to the box was good. I mean, I think it did the same thing for uh, PG. He moved to the box. You could see the field. You could see what's going on. Um, you know, there was a few play calls that were a little different. You know, I think where he might have ran some screens on the standing on the sideline, he he didn't run as many. Um, I, I think it definitely. I think it helped, but I think he still can be a little conservative, and I think our second half uh, proved that a little bit. No, I actually, really thought, man, I, I really thought, you know, 73 was definitely, definitely there. And we just kind of let off the gas a little bit. Bro, I saw <laughs> 49 at half. I thought 100. <laughs> the game was that good. Was... <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I wanted triple yeah. digits bad. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just wanted to set that record, man. Like, I was like... Give me 73, 74. No, you were pretty set do on the 73. Do, or do what the Dolphins didn't have the balls to do. Oh, yeah. yeah, do what the Dolphins didn't have the balls to do against the Broncos. Kick the fucking field goal. Fuck the Broncos. They couldn't stop you the whole game. Yeah, right. <laughs> I agree. Yep. Tony my, my, my philosophy is make them stop you, man. If you don't like what a team is doing to you, and I even even coaching my son's little league team. If you don't like what the team's doing, to you, stop it. Yeah, of yeah. course. I tell people that well, in Madden I, all the time. I, on, on the flip side yeah. of that, man. <laughs> on, the, on the flip side, I didn't want to and see them come quit. out of halftime. 
I, I didn't want to see these dudes come out of halftime and start throwing throwing the ball all over the field either. You know what I mean? It, that's only a couple pick sixes away from this game starting to go the other way. You know what I mean? Ask uh, Atlanta in the Super Bowl. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That was only I definitely agree. Line. Yeah, I, you got to you got to run that clock at forty nine nothing. Yep. Tody B. That's that's right. That's right. That's, that's all right. I think it was okay. I'm gonna yes, use sir. a I'm gonna use a video game reference. If you played Madden, hell yeah. You don't play Madden on the sideline with a bad view and you can't see the plays. You want to call the plays? It's elevated behind the line. You see everything. So, like, it, it, it had to have helped him see the bigger picture. Because don't get me wrong, if you're struggling, you need that one thing that's going to help you not struggle. So, like, I'm not saying he can't call a good game on the sideline. But when you see it a little bit differently, you're able to adjust in the right in the right spots at the right times. You just got to be able to to see the the whole field, the whole field. Like he was saying just a second ago, we're going to say the second level, a hundred percent. I've sat front row and I've sat nosebleeds. I like nosebleeds because I'm sitting there and I'm looking at everything from the from the kicker on the kickoff to the far, you know, gunner on that one side, you can see every aspect of the game. It had to have helped him a little bit. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Hey, Val, you've been to games, right? Yeah, so I'll be like, I I, I think I could kind of see what they're saying, where you're, like, sitting down lower. All you can see is basically, like, the back of the players, and you can see everything up close. And I get what Tony's saying. And, I mean, like, you can sit there and talk to the players. But, like, I 100% agree with Gunny. When you sit on that second and third level, I, have you, I don't know, have you gone to a game and sat on the second and third level? I, I, that's, like, usually where we sit. So once you sit in second and third level, you can see the whole field. And once you can see the whole field, guys, I, I 100% agree with you guys you can see exactly what the other team is trying to do. I mean, like, as a coordinator, your mind starts thinking out of formations, out of seeing things. I'm sure he's probably in the booth, and he's like, oh, man, well, you know, hey, they're doing this. Hey, you know, I know that they can talk to the quarterback till I don't know how many seconds, but you're probably in there until the last second being like, oh, man, they came out in this. You know, make sure you throw it to Tommy. Click. But I mean, like, that, that's what I feel like because that view is so different, man. I mean, like, I've been on the field. When you're on the field, man, and trying to call the play from the sidelines, it's hard because you don't see everything. You don't see the packages that are coming in and out. You don't see the formations. You don't see, like, like Tony said, you don't have that backside view that you see the whole field. Now, when you sit, like, up on top, man, it looks like a video game. You know, yep. you see the bunch of little ants, and you're like, okay, you know, Freddy's over there. Things like that. Guys, I do think it did. The game. this guy don't lie. Hey, don't lie. Hey, don't lie, baby. <laughs> That's why they put you up there. So, hey, we've gone through all these hypotheticals. We talked about AOC. Guys, with this win, now in the draft, you know, we're, we're following around 12th to 18th in the draft. Okay? That's really going to put us. We talked about, hey, we want competition in the quarterback room, which is something important for us to improve. So, guys, now that we're drafting 12th, there's a lot of different options, okay? I want you to tell me what you guys would do and how you guys would package this, okay, to get a veteran quarterback in that room and a rookie quarterback in that room. Okay, and how you guys are going to make this happen? Because right now, you know, veteran quarterbacks that are going to be out on the market. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Okay, for trade, it's going to be Justin Fields, Kyler Murray, Trey Lance. That's what kind of we're looking at in trade, guys. Okay, free agent quarterbacks. You got Kirk Cousins. You got Ryan Tannehill. You got Jacoby Brissett. You got Baker Mayfield. You got Marcus Mariota, you got Sam Darnold, you got Gardner Meshu, you got Tyrod Taylor, you got Drew Locke, and you got Jameis Winston. 
Okay. Those are all free agents, all right, that you can bring in. Now, you know, let's start with Gunny. How are you going to make that the most competitive quarterback room that you can and who are you bringing in and how are you doing this and how are you packaging this? Well, right. first things first, man, you got to draft a quarterback, right? And to get, for, for me, from what I'm looking at, the top six, QBs is where we want it. We got to get one of those guys. We're, and I know it ain't going to be Caleb Williams. So well, I don't know about Drake May either, but Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, uh, Shooter Sanders, if he comes out, those are all really good quarterbacks, man. I've never seen Michael May p- play, so I, I don't want to say that he's he's the guy or anything like that. But those, those five quarterbacks, you got to find a way to get one of those. You got to fall into one of those guys somewhere. And that, hopefully that's – if it's in the first round, we may have to trade up for one of those, but we got to get one in the draft, man. I don't want to, I don't want to see a second-round quarterback. And if, if Penix falls that far, then great, we, we grab him. But I don't see that – I still don't see that happening. You know what I mean? Um, as far as the – as far as when we're talking about the vets, I don't know, man. It doesn't have to be – it really – for me, it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a Jameis Winston type or, you know, it, it, could, it could be like – I'll give you an example. A guy we had last year, I know he's probably not available, but like Jerry Stidham. You bring in Jerry Stidham, a guy who sat on the bench, played a little well, you know, probably plays really good in, in, in practice and things like that. So, I mean, we don't need a guy who used to be a starter who's trying to be a starter. You know what I mean, still? Like, Jameis Winston is going to want to be a starter somewhere. Somebody will probably get him to be a starter, I would imagine. Um, who else? Uh, who else did you say? I mean, the, the guys, the trade, I don't think I like that either. I don't want to trade away any capital based on, you know, a quarterbacks that we've seen and we've already seen enough of, you know what I mean? I don't think yeah. I like that, but like, I mean, the guys are, the guys that are sitting around are probably going to be good being a second stringer. That's competition to me. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be like a guy who's coming in to be the starter. Cause that's what you're going to get when you're bringing a veteran. This is the, the type of, you know, a, a, um, James Winston or something like that. Those guys, that guy wants to be a starter in the NFL. You know, no, and, absolutely. Yeah. So I think we bring in somebody who's who's coming in to compete because the real competition should be with between the rookie and then last year's rookie who is AOC. That should be the real competition. You know what I mean? So. So that's what you want. That, that's where I'm at. OK. Hey, so you said, hey, we might have to move up in the draft. OK. Right now we're at number 12. OK. To move up. What are you willing to give up? What what are you willing to see as the the trade package to give away to move up? Well, to move up, you basically get you trade you swap picks right with somebody. I don't know what pick that would be. You swap pick and then you give away a couple of late round later round picks, maybe a third and a fourth or something like that. But you got to get you have to get up and get a quarterback. They don't fall down. They don't fall in your lap. Man, I'd hate to. I'd hate for us to be drafting the second and third round trying to find the next AOC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I got. You. I just don't want to see that. Pick twelve, though. I don't All think right. we're gonna move up that far to get one of those quarterbacks, though. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. I haven't looked at the teams in front of us, but I'm sure at least three of those teams are gonna be looking at QBs right away. And I'm not even. I haven't even looked at it, so I know for sure they're gonna be digging, digging for last, a QB. Last I kind of configured it, I think, man, it was closer to five or six teams possibly right. needing a QB. Yeah, it'll be close. It'll be close to it, It's what. <clears throat> So, so what? I think you got to look at it like this. What did it cost Carolina to move up last year? It cost them the swap of the picks, right? It cost them another first. It cost them DJ Moore. I mean, it it was not cheap to move up. Two firsts and DJ Moore. Well, they swapped first, right? Yeah. Like in last year's draft, they oh, swapped. I thought they gave that this year and next year's. And draft then they gave up. this. Yes, they swapped. They gave up this year's and DJ Moore. And I believe there was another later pick or two in that deal as well i'd have to pull it up so that's also, okay. that's also for the number one pick though right yeah that's for the number one yeah that's for right. the number one Move, moving up to get a quarterback is going to cost you at least two a swap and an extra first in my opinion mm. minimum minimum that would be uh, hurt. you know sanders ain't coming out so really i mean we're looking at what four or five top because mm-hmm. His, his daddy already said he ain't going nowhere. Uh, <laughs> no, you ain't lying. I believe it. And, and, you know, and I think at the end of the day, I think he really 
wants a spot in that Heisman room at the end of the season, and he wants to really elevate his name to where Caleb's name was all year this year, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. It's the only way to do it because he couldn't do it with Caleb there. Ooh. Yep. Right, and he almost beat Caleb. But, they, you know, and they yeah. had – I mean, he put up incredible numbers with, let's be honest, a shit offensive line. Right. Um <laughs> You know, so I, I think that dude's got something to prove. I don't think he's, I don't think he's coming out this year. Um, so, so really, it becomes between what Caleb will be gone, Drake will probably be gone, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Bo Nix, yep, yeah. I mean, unless you got a player yeah. you're sold on, you know, yeah. and you're Bo willing Nicks to give is up hard. Something. Man, I wouldn't give up a bag of Doritos you know, for Bo Nix. He right reminds now. me of uh, who's that cat that came out with uh, for. Uh, <laughs> The Tennessee Titans picked him up. Levis this year. Oh. Levis, no. yeah, that's who. Levis or or no, Levis. that's who Bo Nix reminds me of is Levis. It's exactly almost kind of who he reminds me of. The Pac-12 championship game showed me all I need to know about that dude, man. When when you get down, I mean, shit, they still had three minutes to go, and that dude's over there with his head covered up, fucking pouting on the bench. I mean, there's a reason he's playing in a couple weeks. Right. He he, he gave everybody a bad look, man, and I don't know. I'm not sold on the guy. And look how long it took him to really adjust to college. Mm. Well, look at Caleb Williams. Yeah, that long. Caleb longer. Williams did the same oh. thing. He ran to his mom and jumped in her lap with a towel on his face. Agreed. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sold on. <laughs> hey, I'm not sold on that hear, either. You ain't hearing me say Caleb, Caleb, Caleb either. I don't think Ooh. Caleb. Caleb's got some deficiencies, man. Yeah, the dude's I, talented. I ain't gonna take that from him, but he's he's got some things. I don't I don't know that he can. I don't know. I just I'm not sold on him, man. Nope. No, I, I agree. Hey, Tony, thoughts? I say uh, I would be happy with 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 seeing a little move up, but not giving up like they were saying. Not too much draft capital. Um, a swap of picks, maybe a. Maybe one other pick, but you would really have, like they were saying, you really got to be sold to move. And and even if you move, you might not move enough if someone else is sold on that same player. So I don't want to give up too much and not get the player we want, but I, we we got to go. We got to get a quarterback, though. We got to get a quarterback first round. I mean, yeah. plain and simple. Like, whatever they got, I mean, they got to get one. And they got to get the right one. His fingers crossed they do yeah, it. I agree. I'm looking at a mock draft right now. CBS Sports is basically assuming that we're picking up Justin Fields. Cause... I, so I'd say on last week's you know podcast, man, if AP's the coach, I think they might find a way to go get Jaden because that's his guy, right? Yeah. But he, I mean, you, then but you got to look at cost too. Justin Fields isn't going to cost you what it's going to cost to move up in the first in the first round of the draft. Justin Fields, well, he's going into year four, and then you got year. Uh, you could pick up his fifth year option. I don't think that's a bad option. And then you bring in a guy like Minshew or Brissett, who's done it. You know, they're not going to be starters in the league. There's your there's your uh, uh, vet. You know. Mm-hmm. Nope. So I, agree. I, I don't. I mean it. To me, it, it's it's hard to say because who's the coach? Who's yeah, going to be the head coach? And that's going to that's going to be the now, biggest question. If they scrap AP and they go Harbaugh, does Harbaugh want his want his Michigan boy? I don't know. Ooh, that, does that Harbaugh want Justin Fields? No, I, I don't know. I, that so I'm, I'm looking at these mock drafts talking about we're going to be able to grab Michael Penix in the second round. That, hey, if we could pick up Michael Penix in the second, that'd be nice. But we don't know. Again, I, it all depends happy, on who's going to be. I like Michael Penix better than better than. I like him better than Bo Daniels Nick. and the other one. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Penix. My only question is: Is he going to be able to stay healthy with all them leg injuries he's had? True. Oh, absolutely. That's why he'd be falling to the second round, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, Maddie B, thoughts on how you're going to get that uh, quarterback room competitive? I mean, in all honesty, yeah, 12 is where we're at now. It's just like I said earlier, it all depends on how we finish out the season. We could be closer to, you know, seven or six, you know, by the time season's end. But uh, if we're saying well, we like – we could season, go the other way. 
or we yeah. can go the other way. Yeah, or we can go the other way. You know, if we if we keep winning, we can go the other way. You know, we're looking at eighteen to twenty. You know, that we're picking. So I mean, like I said, it all depends on where we finish out. But like, if we're saying like as today was the end of the season and we're at number twelve, um, I'm looking at like five teams right now that I'm saying that are looking for a quarterback, and that would be New England, Washington, Chicago, and the New York Giants. I think Possibly everybody else. Arizona. Yeah, but that's it. That's if they can get rid of Kyler Murray. I don't think they get rid of Kyler yeah. Murray, man, because. I mean, they 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 put too much they put too much into him, and they gave him too much of a contract. And trying to just release him is just not going to happen. So I don't think they go with, I don't think they waste a pick on that. I think they pick offensive linemen. I bet they pick up the first offensive lineman in the draft, or we trade oh, with them. You know, or they how could do you possibly, go Marvin Harrison Jr. Or yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, if you trade with Vegas, you can get him at number twelve. You know, nah, if you, uh, well, he no, nah, yeah, I guess far. you're right. He ain't going that far. Yeah, he he go to, he'll go to the Jets or something like that. The he'll be a top five pick. Yeah, yeah, Chicago will probably pick him up. If I'm Chicago, I'd go Harrison Jr. at one, and you'll still get your quarterback at two if you like a couple guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, I'm sorry, not at two at three. If you even if Arizona traded with somebody. Chicago is still going to land. I just see us, if, if we're going to trade with anybody right now, and I'm in, and I'm sitting at number twelve, I'm trading with Arizona. Like that's I think that's my only you. that's my only trade option I have. Everybody else is pretty much going to be set where they want, and or it's either that or the the New York Jets at number seven, ahead of the Chargers. Yeah, cause because because I mean, everybody else, move. New England's not going to move. Carolina's not going to move. Um. Well, Carolina, Arizona, that pick. That's Chicago. Arizona's yeah. up in the air with Murray. Washington, I don't see them moving from four. I don't see Chicago moving from five, especially if they get rid of Fields. Um, and I don't see the the Giant or the Jets, the Chargers, the Titans, Falcons, or the Packers taking a quarterback. So, I, my only my only place is to trade is number three. So it would be Arizona. Would be my spot. I think I think the Falcons would take one if they don't trade for Justin Fields. Yeah, but, but I mean they just picked up Justin Ritter and all those guys too. So that or Ritter, trash. I think. What's his name? Garbage. Devin Ritter. <laughs> Desmond Ritter. Desmond <laughs> Ritter. So if I if trash. I'm doing that, I'm I'm trading up to number three in my opinion to Arizona, and then I have Aiden on the back. Are they number three right now? They're number three right now. If the if the, Damn, if so the they, season they ended today, down. who's moving way up? Who, bu- who bumped up to number two? New England. Oh shit, they're drafting a quarterback. Yeah, they're definitely drafting a quarterback. You don't, you don't think Zappy's the the quarterback of the future, bro? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> yeah, even think yeah, Belichick. Much- <laughs> I don't even think Belichick's there this year, dude. As That's- much as Heineke is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's- All right. Bel- yeah. But no, so I say I, I trade at number struggles. three there, and then I I got I got Aiden O'Connell as my you know uh, the guy that's gonna fight. He's gonna either be number two or he's gonna be number one. Um, and so then, who do you bring in as their senior guy? How do you bring in? Your if senior I bring guy? in a senior guy, I'm bringing in somebody on a low paid, uh, but like a Garner Minshew type guy. Okay, yeah. you know I, I like it that you gave me a name. Every nobody else wanted to give me a name. I'm like, give me a name. I need a name. Who's yeah, gonna be? No, I'm going Garner Minshew on that. Percent. Okay. Or Brissett, yep, I can go with a yeah, Brissett. Brissett. That'd be a great pickup. Yep. Okay. So, you know, before the show, I, I always send Val the notes and everything, so that way we can chop it up, you know. So I'm a, I'm going to, like, leave you guys this with this thought, okay? Because this is what I started thinking. If we look at the draft board right now, from one <laughs> There's one team that has two picks in the top six, right? And it's the Chicago Bears. I think we can play this two ways. Okay, it's like you guys said. We can play with them as in to bring in Fields, to bring him in. And I think what's going to cost us to bring Fields is at least a number one or a number two. And what do you guys think about this? If we do package a number one or a number two, you got to either package Renfro with it for the number six pick or you package Jacoby Mayers with it for the number six pick. I think either that, 
I think either of those two scenarios could work to either get Justin Fields or to move up in the draft. If you really feel invigorated about a guy in the draft, okay? So I, I, that's the way I look at it. I say, hey, if we trade with anybody, we got to trade with somebody that has at least a couple of picks in that first 10 because they're willing to take a little bit less than the other dude that has, like, that's his one pick in the top 10. So that's where I would look to move is with Chicago because Chicago is going to pick up their number one, and we have a plethora of receivers. We have, we're deep in that one area. So I, I'd be like, I could see us doing that for to either get a rookie or to get Justin Fields in the in our room, you know? But what I would like to see is like you guys said, hey, I want to see us draft a rook. If we do get a quarterback with our first round, whether it's Justin Fields or Kyler Murray or a guy like that that we bring in, I would still like to see us draft a quarterback in the second or third round. That's I'm with the way that. you know, that's the way I'm looking at it to build that quarterback room and to like get that room competitive. Because it gives us two options. You can either bring in a senior guy with that first round pick or say, hey, you know what? We really believe in this one kid. Let's package something good. Let's get that good kid in the first and then we can bring in a free agent. And if we brought in a free agent, okay, here are some names that I like, okay? And the reason, I'm not going to say that these guys are starters, but I think that they're good mentors, okay? Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. You know, he's been around the league. He's done it. I like Gardner Meshu, okay? Been around the league, kind of knows how to do it, right? And here's a guy that's kind of like athletic and can do a little bit of everything. Tyrod Taylor. We keep seeing mobile quarterback. We keep seeing a guy that is young. Bro, Tyrod Taylor doesn't got that much run in him. You know, and he can hold it over for a little bit. I think that's the way we make the, the quarterback room more competitive and get the best out of that room. So what do you guys think about that? I like it. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think Justin's going to cost you a first. I don't think so either. I think Justin would cost you a second, and honestly, I I, I would trade a second and Renfro for Justin you, all day you know, long. Second and Renfro, yeah, I'd be like a second and a yeah, right, Gunny. Second, I don't, I, second. I don't think Fields is. I don't think Fields is going to be. I don't think. Uh, I don't think a one is. I think a two is what it'll take to get Justin their attention, and you throw in a guy like Renfro. I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade Jacoby. He's our he's our legit number two. I wouldn't move on from him at all. I think the offense will take a step back. Let, let me I agree with you on that. I ain't, I ain't trading Jacoby. For I'm keeping anybody, really. Yeah, no, I'm keeping Jacoby, especially if we keep you know uh, Devontae. I'm keeping I'm keeping Jacoby on the other side. You know, um, I I don't know if I'm trading for Fields though, man. Like I just. It's no different than having Aiden O'Connell and what we have now. He's not, he hasn't proven anything. And yeah, I mean, yeah, he's played for the Bears. He doesn't have a good record or anything, but he's been hurt. He, you know, he's, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I've watched him play and I just, I don't see that, that it with Justin Fields, man. Like, I just don't see it with him. Um, the Bears, though, with two picks right there, I see I see someone like Pittsburgh trading up with the Bears right there. That's the only reason why I'm saying Arizona, and I, that's kind of just how I see it right now. But I'm not trading Jacoby, not for anything. If I'm trading up and I'm getting – if I do trade for Justin Fields and they do, then you give them like a second round and I don't even know if I want to give up. Renfro for him, like I just How about for that I, six I round pick. Uh, if they say, "Hey, for that six pick in the draft in the first round, it's the, actually the fifth pick." It would actually be the, the fifth, fifth pick. pick. So for so that for fifth the fifth pick, pick so for the fifth trade, pick, you're swapping, and then oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It'd be it'd be picking a player. I, I think pick. it would have to be picking a player. Yeah, if I mean, if you're going to fifth, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're going for that pick, yeah. I guess if you're going for fields, you're not getting the pick. You know, you're not going to go up to number five for 
So, but yeah, so if you're getting fields, no first rounder, but for if fields, it's no first up, rounder. Um, if I'm moving up to five, yeah, I'll give you a first rounder. Um, that's, I mean, that's the cost, anyways. That's what it's going to cost you, no matter what. You give up mayors, Jacoby mayors, for, for that. Fair no, round. I'm not, no, I'll give you up for info, but I'm not giving you up Jacoby mayors. I'll give you I don't, want to give up any, I don't want to give up any of the wide receivers on this team. I want this this and receiver. I, like I said, I'm not even. I'm iffy on even giving Renfro up. Like I think Renfro is gonna have his. I think he's gonna have a breakout year. You know, I think he's. I think I think Renfro's gone. He's the only one I would give up. Honestly, Renfro Renfro's but, salary is high and he ain't done shit since he's got paid. Yeah, I, I he's the only you one you can blame it on. I, whoever you want, he ain't done shit. Let's just keep really it real. Want to move him. You know what I mean? Just, I mean, just keep him until he's he's expired and whatever. He makes big plays here and there, but he, uh, you know, sometimes no, no, no. He also I, makes I, big fumbles lately. Big, huge fucking yeah. huge fumbles. <laughs> I was about to say that, <laughs> no, but no, uh, no. yeah, I'm not giving I'm not giving up that much for for Justin Fields. He's not worth a second. No, no, he's I don't not even worth see. a second right now. He's not worth a second. No, he hasn't proven to anything to me. Like that guy is. We're talking he's like had third a, and fourth now, man. Yeah, he's had like what six wins his whole his whole career or some shit like that. Like he's he ain't got very many wins, and no, he's been he's hurt, like he's you know. So I mean, how many? You know, you're giving. Yeah, I'm not giving up. I'll give you a second round for him if I'm going that route. But yeah, I'll see him being worth a then, second. And then I'm staying at twelve. Okay. Yeah, that's a, exactly like I said. I'd give up a, I'd give up a second, and go get a defensive player. Go get one of the, uh, you know, a good defensive player with that twelfth pick. I'm going offense with my twelfth pick, man. I'm getting me an offensive line, man. I build that that offensive line up, man. That's my. If I'm staying at twelve, I'm picking offense. I'll be honest. Give me the best available player, offense or defense. Yeah, they need that. to be need offensive yeah, linemen. Go with that. Agency or D or draft. I don't care where it's at, but that offensive line needs some help. A lot. Okay. I like it. I, I really like don't it. think it needs a lot of help. I think it needs a good coach again and a right guard. Hey, that makes a lot of a difference, man. A good coach and a right guard, that's a lot of difference right there. What there. was – I mean, Tom Cable did did a lot. With the you know, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that man Rotten guy is just hot garbage. Get him the <laughs> fuck out of here. I like hey, the last name. His contract, his, his contract's up. Man Rotten is rotten out right now, man. He hey. is – god damn, that guy is terrible. Damn uh, stinking. Man. Hey guys, let's move on to <laughs> segment three now. Hey, segment three. Let's talk keys to victory against them queefs, baby. We got to spank them and KC. So, guys, well, hey, you know what, Val? Hit me with your one key to victory. Give me your one key to victory right now. What is what we got to do? To beat KC and KC <laughs> on Christmas think, Day, um, and Santa Claus can come I drop think they us need off to that nice. Stick w. with the energy that they had in the Chargers, <laughs> and don't let the um, like the score get to them. I feel like when, especially playing against KC, when we're behind, when we start falling behind, it's like they lose the momentum, and it's like. Mm, we're gonna lose anyways, you know. Like that's the that, that's the vibe I get when I see lately. When I've seen, it's kind of like they're behind. They kind of just like start letting off. I think they just need to keep the energy and keep in mind, and just play hard. I mean, what is there? What is there to really lose? I mean, No, no, I got you. So you're saying, hey, you just got to yeah. go out there with that fighting spirit. You don't want to see them roll over if they go down. You want to see them keep fighting and just keep grinding. Okay. All right. Hey, that fighting spirit is definitely important. Hey, Matty B, what's your key to victory against the Chiefs, bro? Oh, man. Key to victory is uh, going to be containing Travis Kelsey. I think if we can, if our defense can contain that guy, I think we're all right. Their their receivers aren't doing too well. Our our corners are looking great. Um, if we can just figure out a way to stop that guy from getting the first downs on fucking 
third and 25s, you know, I'm good. Like, that's the only guy we got to cover when we know what's going to him. So let's, instead of doing like we did last time, let's, let's cover this guy. Let's not let this guy catch any balls this time. No, absolutely. Gunny, key to victory versus the Chiefs. Do exactly what you fucking did last week. (laughs) And we win the game. You know what I'm saying? That's my key to victory. Go up to the shelf, grab that bottle that you bottled all that stuff up in, pop that top, get your ass back on the field, and keep doing what you were doing last week. Yep. Seriously, put another, man. Put I mean, another 63 up. Yeah. Put another 63 up on him. Just don't and don't be don't be frightened of Patrick Mahomes, man. Yeah. That, he that's ain't a, scary. we get we get scared <clears throat> of Patrick Mahomes too much. Like we take a lead on him, and we it's like it's almost like we know he's coming. Here he comes, and then we kind of freeze up. You know what I mean? Yeah. We didn't freeze up against nobody last week, even though nope. there wasn't anybody to freeze up against. You know? No, but I got to. Do what you did last week. That's the key. Well, I mean, and play That's together as a team. Number one through number three. Drink that pip juice. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, there exactly. you go. Bro. Hey, it's like you said, total team victory. Total team victory. Hey, all in. It's going to take 60 minutes from the offense. Mm-hmm. they got to play four quarters of football. I'm not worried about the defense. Um, you know, create turnovers and keep keep doing what you've been doing. Uh, but the, I think the offense is key. 60 minutes. You cannot get it. You get a lead, you got to keep got to keep going. Foot on the gas. Got to keep going. And do the same, the same stuff that worked, man. Get Aiden in a rhythm. Get Aiden comfortable. And uh, just keep your foot on the gas. No, no, no. I'm I'm with you guys. All right. And my key to victory is this, man. I, I'm with you guys that, one, it has to be a total team victory. And we just got to do what we do. Two, guys, I'm going to be real with y'all. We got to say, have an attitude. We got to go in there and say, F your team. Uh-huh. We're going to do what we're going to do. And we're going to handle our business. And that's what we're going to do. At the end of the day, guys, if we don't go in there and try to handle our business and try to do the right thing, like Gunny said, and try to have the same attitude, the same energy, then, guys, we, we, we're just not going to make it happen. But we got to have that same energy, that same thought process. Every little single thing that we did last week, we got to bring that juice. Okay. And I like what Val said. It has to be a total team victory. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys. Hey, Val, we'll catch you later, girl. You have to step out. We'll see ya. All right, Bye. guys. See ya. Good night, Val. Let's move. Good night. All right, guys. Hey, now we're going to go to our pick em challenge, the last part of the show. Give me a second here. Bam, bam, bam. How'd you guys do last week? I, uh, shoot. Some of us. I, were I, was, tw- I was 12 and 4. Ooh, 12 and 4. Dang. Ooh. I got myself a competition over here, huh? Yeah. Man, yes, and I, and I, almost, I almost picked the Panthers, and I said, ah, fuck, give me the fucking <laughs> Should have went with my gut. <laughs> Hey, damn it. All right. <laughs> Yo, Maddie B, I got Saints Rams. Who do you got? Mm, give me the Rams on that one. Gunny. In LA or in New Orleans? In, 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 LA, in LA. In LA. Gunny, who do you got? I'm going to take the Rams, bro. In LA. Got the Rams. Got gotcha. Seems like a perfect, perfect place for Derek Carr to choke. <laughs> it's been happening quite a bit lately. Yo, all in, who you got? Man, that's a that's a that's a more interesting game. I think thinking about it now, man, you got both teams fighting. One fighting for a division, one fighting for a wild card. Yep. Yep. Yeah, fuck it. I'll I'll go different. I'll go Saints. Wow. Okay. He's gonna take DC. Let's go. I think All that right. defense is better in New Orleans than it is in in LA. That's mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm. I agree. 
All right, guys, I got Bengals Steelers. Let's start with Gunny. Uh, I'm going to take the Steelers at home. No surprise there. All in. Man, Rudolph got the got the nod, right? Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> man, uh, man, I, I like what that kid Jake Browning is doing. Man, give me give me Bengals. Okay, Maddie B. Man, I'm with all in on this one, man. I'm like what that quarterback's doing. I don't see this. The Steelers is looking like some hot garbage right now. So give hey, me Cincinnati. Keylon. Hey, I like it. I like it. Key loss and the Raiders gain a playoff. That's, that's why you pick them. Yep. Let's go. Whatever you think is about to happen always goes the opposite. Oh damn! <laughs> hey, we, really? We need. I mean, that game's. We need both of those teams to lose. So the the uh, two games. These two games both. Right. Yeah. And the Steelers lost last week, so that would mm-hmm. Bengals winning would help us there. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Well, let's Bengals in. Fucking straight scud missile for the Bills Bengals game. Dude, I love a sudden a rash of injuries hit the steel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, I got Bills Chargers. Let's start all in. Oh, Bills all day. They're rolling. <laughs> Matty B. I don't even know why I'm asking. Bro, I fucking I'm gonna go Buffalo. Oh yeah, not even. Yeah, I'm going Buffalo. I was gonna say that I think Chargers may come out with a new head coach and everything, but fuck the Chargers. <laughs> oh man, I was about to say the same thing, Matty. Uh, but fuck the Chargers, bro. You know how to say fuck. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> you. I wouldn't be surprised though if they came out with some heat, man. Oh, yeah, For I'll, sure. I'm in this. Yep. But I think the Bills, man, they're they're the Bills they're are just, rolling right the now. The Bills are gonna crush them, dude. It don't matter. Yeah. They're coming out they with that one heat. for the Bills. Yeah, yeah, they ain't even got Justin Herbert, so they ain't got nothing to play for. Yeah, LA LA's playing in LA, so you know that's gonna be a home the, the Bills fans will be there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a that's a home game for the Bills. Mm-hmm. That's a home game for anybody besides the Chargers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad hey, shit, man. Gutty, so you got the Bills, too? Yeah, I'm taking the Bills, too. Okay. Hey, so I got Commanders, Jets. Hey, let's go with Matty B. Ooh, Commanders, Jets. That's a garbage game. Um, damn. Uh, give me the – Game out. Jets. Jets. It's in New York. Give me the Jets. Gunny, I, I'll take the Commanders, bro, just because Matt took the fucking Jets. Oh, <laughs> right, right. uh, really? can't, can't go with the same one as me, huh? That's my only logic in this game. Like, yeah. All nobody in? cares. Who wins it. <laughs> man, give me the give me the Jets, man. I think they get it done. All right. Yo, now I got Lions Vikings at the Vikings Stadium. Let's start with Gunny. That's going to be a game. The Lions haven't looked so good as of late, huh? No, bro. They do not look I good. think I think they'll get it back together this week against the Lions, against the Vikings. Give me the Lions. All right. All in? Yeah, I think the uh, Lions get it back going. They want to win that division for the first time in 30 years, and they got to win this game to do it. Yes, sir. Matty B. Man, all in hit everything I was just getting ready to say. <laughs> they got something to fight for. <laughs> the first time in like a hundred years for these guys. Yes, sir. All right, guys. I got Browns, Texans. All in. Who do you got? Man, that's another one. We need both both yeah, those teams both to lose. Teams. And yeah. they both won last week. Man, I think that Browns defense is better than I'll give me the Browns. All right. Maddie B. Man, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go the opposite of all in there and go Houston. I know the defense is better, but I'm tired of picking the same team as all. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Gunny's going to Browns too. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Texans. And here, here's oh. why. Browns already got nine. They're already nine games in. They won nine. 
Texans, well, no. You know what? Let me flip it. Well, fuck. I don't want you to win. Oh, CJ Stroud playing, or is he still oh, in concussion CJ's protocol? Is, is he still in pro- concussion protocol? He's still right? in concussion protocol. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna take the Browns because fuck it. If the Browns win, they win. But the Texans need to lose, right? Okay. Somebody's got to win this game. If the Browns win ten, they're gonna have a better record than us, no matter what. Yep. True that. And if the Texans lose, then they're eight and seven. I'll take the Browns. Fuck it. We gotta we gotta get we gotta give one up. I'm gonna just give up the Browns. All right, got you. All right, guys. Now we got Packers, Panthers. Hey, let's start with Matty B. Packers, Panthers. Mmm. Yeah, give me the Packers. Packers, gotcha. Yeah, I'll take yeah. Green Bay. Running. Toilet bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet bowl. I can't even believe anybody would want to watch that game. Shit. Uh, oh, man. I guess I'll take the Packers based on nothing, really, other than the Panthers are worse. Yeah, I'll take the Packers. Hey, where's that game at? Is there actually going to be fans in the stadium? It's in Carolina. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah, there'll be Packer fans. They travel pretty good, I guess. Yeah, they'll be Packer fans there. Carolina's going to have to do like the Sacramento Kings used to do, man. Head down to Carl's Jr., get you a Western bacon cheeseburger, and get a free Sacramento Kings ticket. <laughs> Dad would do like the Chargers do and duplicate their <laughs> – right. duplicate one chick. <laughs> hey, that was legit, though. Back in the day, like the 90s, you, you roll up to Carl's Jr., man, get you a fucking burger and a Kings ticket. No yep. shit. Hey. Oh. Yes, yeah, sir. I remember that back, back, in the back, day. back in the day, get a discount uh, if you hit yeah. like certain numbers. Oh man, that was the those best time. Yeah, that shit. You, you're getting king's tickets for a whopper, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> there's a big problem. Yeah. They, they were terrible. And you know, uh, Packers. Packers. All right, man. Hey, so let's go Seahawks Titans, and let's start with all in. Where are Seahawks? Matty B. Hmm. Yeah, give me Seahawks. Gunny. I've been picking the Titans quite a bit lately, and they haven't. I don't think they've come through once. So give me Seattle. Man, <laughs> Seattle in a clean sweep. All right, guys. Yeah, off that bandwagon, bro. <laughs> oh. I was with that Pittsburgh. This will probably be the best time for you guys to pick the Titans because I'm off them now. They're probably going to win. <laughs> so they'll probably win next week. It's almost – I take that to the bank. Yes, <laughs> he said take that to the <laughs> bank. Got to go to Vegas right now, put money on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, hey, Colts, Falcons. Let's start with Gunny. Uh, I'm going to take the – I'm going to take the Colts. Even though it's in Atlanta, I'll take the Colts. Matt. Hmm. Yeah, give me the Colts on that one. All in. Man, we really need the Colts to lose this game. Yeah, but I, I, are I, they really in there? Fuck. Yeah. Who yeah, the Colts, the Colts. The Colts are in there. We need like five. We need like five teams to lose like six games. Six, I believe. <laughs> There's six teams there. Yeah. Uh, I picked the Falcons the last two weeks and they fucking lost, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> Give me the Colts. Hey, Colts in the clean sweep, and for all those. Hey, Colts I'm going to flip. I'm going to go Falcons. Oh, and maybe oh. maybe me picking against the Falcons, yep. they'll lose. That's why I'm, that's why I'm doing it. I'm, uh. I'm putting the juju on it. And hopefully, <laughs> the, the Colts will lose the game. Right, hey, Colts lose, Colts lose this week. Colts lose next fucking week. There's their two. There's their two. We're in there. The Broncos already lost, so when we beat them at the end of the year, there's two. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, that's all we need. That's all we need. All right. The Steelers about to take an L. I mean, we we could get this help. It could happen. It could happen. For sure. got 4%. Let's go. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) We've seen worse odds. Yeah. Jaguars. 2021. I got Jaguars, Bucks, Matty B. Let's go. Jaguars, Bucks. Ooh, that might give be a me, good game. Give me, give me Jacksonville. I think, I think. Oh, uh, Trevor Lawrence is pissed off from last week. Oh, you ain't lying, man. You ain't lying. Hey, all in. Who do you got? 
Uh, man, give me the Bucks. They, they're fighting for a division. Go. No, Gunny. I don't think he got it. You got the split right now, Gunny. I really don't like the Jags, man. To be honest, I don't know what it is about them. I don't fucking like them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't trust them. And I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the Bucks because I don't like I don't like them. I don't know why. Gotcha. I don't like Trevor Lawrence's face. I don't like their running back. I don't <laughs> Damn. I don't know yeah. what it is. Is your real like beef it. with Clemson? <laughs> sound, sound like me at the Cowboys, man. man. Fuck you. Like, how do you yeah. Tell me how you really feel. I don't know. Because <laughs> <Like, you know, laughs> one of my boys, the Jags fans, been talking shit all year, so maybe that's what it is. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm like, y'all ain't that good, bro. Hey when, Gunny sees a, hey, when Gunny sees a Jags fan, this is what he hits him with, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I hate everybody with that. <laughs> Is that you? No, I'm shit show. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. that's, that's all shit show Joe, man. <laughs> shit oh, show Joe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Have you ever met him? <laughs> no, I haven't. The legend. I never uh, legend. Solid dude. Dude's that's awesome. Dude. Oh, cool. I can't wait to meet him, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, be ready for a good time, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, that's oh, yeah. Preaching to the choir. <laughs> All right, fellas, let's go. Cowboys, Dolphins. Hey, let's go, Gunny. Ooh, nice game. What do you got? Who do you got, Gunny? Uh, Dolphins at home. It's time for the Cowboys to lose a game, man. It just did. Did they? Never mind. Cowboys. They got smoked by Buffalo. Yep. Did they? Oh, yeah. I'm going to take the Cowboys in. I thought All they right. won last week. Natty B. Yo, hey, hit that one liner from uh, Joe again, because uh, Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate the Cowboys, bud. <laughs> Miami all day. Um, right. All in. Yep, my give me Miami too. I hope they fucking boat race. Fucking yes. Dallas. Yep. All right. Hey, now we got Cardinals Bears. Let's go all in. Ooh. God. That's the real toilet bowl game of the that's year. Fucking, right <laughs> that, that's the old prime time right there. Ain't nobody care. Mm-hmm. Damn, you yep. really got to pick this game? That's fucked. Uh, Bears. Matty B. This this is the tankathon. The tankathon. Yep. Right? And in, in the game, uh, who wants to get traded more? Is it Kyler Murray or Justin <laughs> Fields? Well, if Chicago <laughs> loses, they probably move up a little bit. Which means they got a better pick, so it'd be like one and four. <laughs> oh, jeez. One already and five. Won. Yeah, they're already won because of Carolina, but if they win, if they lose these next couple games, man, they could be like one and two. <laughs> these guys could top be like. Two yeah, we got Arizona <laughs> like ahead of them, too. So. That's yeah, the other thing, too. Who, who wants, who want, who wants man, a higher I... pick? <laughs> 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 I think Arizona comes out with that one. I got Arizona. Uh, hey, Gunny, did you already choose this one? No, I haven't because I'm just staring at it. Um, <laughs> fuck, man, that's a tough one. You know what, man? Just because I know a lot of people in Arizona, let me just get the let me just go ahead and take the Cardinals. All right, all right. On, on their behalf. Got you. All there right, there you go. Patriots, Doncos, Matty B. Uh. Not the fucking Broncos. Man, yeah. I'm going to say not the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> not the fucking Broncos. Raiders, bitch! Hell yeah. Yeah, New England, man. New England could help us out this weekend. They could uh, they could knock Denver out for us right here. Yeah, it would yep. be badass. See ya. So, yeah. So what? Are you uh, Batty B, Patriots? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not All the right. Broncos. Gutty? Not the Broncos. Fuck the Broncos. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Patriots in a clean sweep. And to all those Patriots fans out there. Eat a dick. Fuck your team. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> let's, go, let's go zappy. Uh, yeah. We got Raider, Raiders, Queefs, Matty B. Oh, man. Give me the Vegas Raiders, baby. Gutty. Raiders. All in. Is this even a question, man? All the Womp for Christmas is a Raiders All day, baby. Oh, it's a 10 a.m. game on Christmas morning. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, New wake us here in Tejas. Hey, uh, you a pro- yeah, yeah, a little bit later, but I'm gonna wake up till Merry here. Christmas, bro. Yes, sir. 11 a.m. right here. It says oh, that's perfect, dude. Yes, sir. You gotta start a bloody Mary's deep by then. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. I already. <laughs> yep. I'll probably already be done with lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Taking some beer. <laughs> we got Giants, Eagles, Matty B. Ooh, give me the Eagles. They're going to come back from last week. Gunny. Yeah, I'm with I'm with Matt on this one. All in. Yeah, Eagles. Eagles soar, fly in New York City, baby. Let's they can't go. lose, man. If Dallas loses, then they can win. They, they're playing for a division right now. They don't want that fifth seed. Are there any uh, Eagles in New York, or are they just pigeons? <laughs> pretty sure it's pigeon city, baby. Yeah, yeah. Hey, those pigeons pretty look like Eagles. That's what's pigeons. happening. They just look like Eagles. <laughs> they, all bump. they all just big. They just come down there and scoop you up. <laughs> hey, so last game, guys, we got Ravens Niners. Let's go with all in. Thoughts? That's a game right there, man. That's yes, a sir. That's a potential Super Bowl matchup. Man, I, I I think the Niners are due for an L. Give me the Ravens. All right. I think the Niners are the best team in the league right now, but I think they're due. Matty B. Man, you know, I want to say the Niners, but I, I'm going with the Ravens on this, and the only reason is I think the Ravens – Offense exposes the Niners' defense in this game. Really one of the best offenses they're going to see. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. And I think their offense is just fast, man. They just I – I think they're better than Miami's offense. Honestly, I think they're just – like Miami's offense is fucking fast, but I think Baltimore's got a pretty quick deep offense as well. I honestly think it's going to be opposite what everybody expects. I think everybody's going to expect a fucking defensive game, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, like 38-35. Okay. Oh, it's going to be a high-scoring game. Oh, uh, it's going to be an interesting one, that's for sure. Gunny. Um, I'm not picking against the Niners anymore, man. Um, the only one, only way that I'd pick against them if they were playing the Raiders, and that shouldn't happen in this week. So um, I'm not picking against the Niners. Take the Niners. All right. So you got the Niners. Yo, guys, we got to that part of the show. Guys, we got down to the end so that, hey, guys, please click like, click subscribe, hit that auto download button so that way you guys can help us out on this podcast. We're trying to get out there, trying to give you guys the best information out there. And, hey, from the Silver and Black Radio Podcast family, guys, it's all about one nation, one team. It's all Red Let's go. Hey, y'all. Merry Christmas.